This lecture is dedicated to showing you the important components or instruments of the Weather Observation Station. This station behind me is maintained by the National Weather Service and operated by Eastern Illinois University students in the EIU Weather Center. The most important aspect of a weather station is the temperature and, and the thermometers that record the temperatures, the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature, and the current temperature. Inside the Stevenson shelter, or Stevenson screen, are the thermometers. Now the reason why it's painted white is to reduce the, in, the influence of insulation, the, Earth's, uh, the, the, sun, uh, the sun's radiation on the thermometers. And it's also placed at five feet, the thermometers inside are placed at five feet off the ground so that the ground does not influence the uh, thermometers as well. So what we'll do is we'll have you come in here closer. All right, so inside the Stevenson screen or Stevenson shelter, either way, we have the maximum thermometer here and the minimum thermometer here. Now the maximum thermometer is unique because at the bulb end it has a constriction that allows us to uh, record the maximum temperature. So what happens at in the day the heat expands the mercury and it shoves it to through the column. When the temperature drops that mercury stays put because it cannot get past the constriction near the bulb. The only way to to reset or to bring the uh, maximum to reset the maximum thermometer is to spin it so that centrif uh, centrifugal force kicks in and shoves the mercury back into the bulb. Now the minimum thermometer, the unique feature of that is that one, it is alcohol filled. Two, it has an index rod. The index rod indicates the minimum temperature. As the temperature drops during the overnight hours, it, the alcohol goes back toward the bulb and it will take the rod with it and then when the temperature rises the next morning begins to rise then the rod will stay put so that is the minimum thermometer and also the end of the alcohol indicates the current temperature the next important instrument of a weather station is its rain gauge the rain gauge has several items associated with it one is the funnel the overflow can, which is this portion here, and then the collection tube. Now when it rains, the precipitation falls into the funnel and gets put into the collection tube. And it fills, 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 okay? And then when we're ready to measure the amount of precipitation, we stick this measuring stick into the collection tube and it records how much rain has fallen. And it shows here that it is 0 0.01 inches of rain over the last 24 hours. And when we're ready to reset it, we just simply pour this out. Now, when you have a big rain, what happens is the rain falls into the funnel, goes into the collection tube, overflows the collection tube, and flows into this can. And so what we have to do is we have to fill the uh, collection tube with the... the surplus of precipitation from this and measure each one adding each uh, amount together. Now this is interesting that this is not a normal stick, measuring stick, it's not a ruler. It is calibrated to the width of the, the can. This is an 8 inch can and this shows 2.30 inches of precipitation. Another type of instrument that we use in the weather station is a frost gauge. And basically what we're doing is measuring the depth of the frost during winter. What we've got here is a 36 inch tube that's filled with fluorescent dye. And as the ground freezes, the dye turns clear to indicate where it's frozen. And then it freezes. And last year we had 14 inches of frozen earth. And then in summer, as we go into spring and summer, then it starts to thaw from the top down, and then you get some of the uh, ice that's still at the lower levels of the soil. So this is the frost gauge, a very important instrument for farming and for also utilities.